Hey, what's up guys, Mark Brunet here and welcome back to my new world building series, Developing the World of Chroma Island. In this third episode, we're going to take a look at the red people's environment, so the area in which they live, and this is going to give me a much better idea of the location and the scale of things when it comes to time to work on the village itself. And then I'll show you some cool tricks in Photoshop to speed up your work. Let's dive right into it. Today we're going to visit this area here, the top of Chroma Island. So obviously this is where the red people live. This is, uh, you know, the big red orb here that was floating. That is, well, their life orb. So that's their source of, of infinite life. And so if you have no idea what I'm talking about now, uh, I highly recommend that you check out the first two episodes of the series where I explain exactly who those people are and kind of their, their lifestyle and what they're all about. And uh, what I want to do with this environment here is really try to illustrate the uh, the region that they live in not so much their village yet uh, I'll get to that uh, next for sure but I wanted to represent give a good example a good idea of how big this fear is and how it's affecting the environment surrounding it the whole purpose of this is to show the effect that it has right so it I'm thinking about it in a very similar way as you would with Zerg from StarCraft. So Zerg, you know, they have kind of like their creep that spreads uh, with time. And I really wanted to do the same thing with the red orb here. Although it's not going to be exactly like creep, so it'll be more like uh, anything that lives really is going to be affected by this thing. So the red people take, uh, you know, have, have extended life because of the energy that their red orb gives them. But I was thinking that the red orb just gives life energy to anything that is in close proximity. Or more like anything that's too close gets impacted by it. So you would find like different uh, new plants that normally you wouldn't found on, on, on top of Chroma Island. But now since this big red orb is, is there, right, it's present, it's affecting the it's affecting the plants. So maybe some new plants are growing, some new some new mushrooms, some new trees. I don't know exactly. But what I know for sure is that I want all of those new uh, all of this kind of you know quote unquote creep spreading to really be the same color as the red people. So really kind of like reddish to reinforce the fact that they are not only invaders on this island, but that they are kind of conquerors, right? So they, they try to spread as much as possible, which is obviously a problem for the other races, the other people living on this island. Now, beyond the, beyond the flora that's affected by this, or and the fauna as well, probably, when the red orb kind of moved there, moved at the top of Chroma Island, it kind of just destroyed everything. So not only did, did it make an you know, otherwise normal mountain uh, hollow, and turned it into the home of the red people, but it also created this, this huge crevice, you know, on the island, kind of splitting most of the island in half. So I'm not exactly sure how that happened, but I, <laughs> I had flashes of, of like Independence Day, right? The first movie when the spaceship kind of just shoots for the first time and destroys the city. So I was thinking something like that, maybe. Um, so the, the red orb kind of just maybe teleported there and just shot down a huge blast and to kind of just clear up the way so that uh, the red people could establish themselves, start from scratch and uh, well, what I'm thinking also with their their future village I'll be that I'll be designing is that uh, well since it's all kind of on rock right it's not on grass or anything like that it's not by the shore uh, it's it's inside a mountain I'm really thinking of their technology uh, close to something like what dwarves would be like so kind of advanced but very very sheltered and now talking about the well the, the illustration itself um, it's coming together kind of kind of what I, I imagined so I'm pretty happy with it so far uh, I chose a vertical canvas so that I could represent kind of the the height of the mountain right so it's supposed to be really really big and tall mountain and I wanted to help represent that um, the uh, you know the, the kind of the green people in the foreground here kind of looking onto uh, looking onto the mountain are, are looking up really so they're not looking down. And my focal point in here is really the entrance of the village. I'm using a lot of the different elements in the painting, so a lot of the a lot of the different lines, a lot of the the rock formations, uh, kind of how the the green people are looking towards towards that destination, and, and with light as well, with color, all of those things to reinforce that that focal point that I want to emphasize. Because I'm kind of fighting a an uphill battle here with the the red ore being so 
so obvious in the in the painting. So whenever you have something that is very vivid, very saturated, and red is one of those colors that excites our eye quite a bit. <laughs> when I don't want that to be the focal point, then I'm kind of fighting and trying to find other ways. Uh, you know, having the mountain there in front of it partially, so partially blocking the sphere is also another trick that I'm trying to use to to diminish the importance of the red sphere so that it doesn't doesn't attract as much attention. It's not as as uh, heavy of an element in my in my composition here. And so by having all of kind of like the, the little hills pointing down towards that entrance, having the little pathway, uh, well, essentially go towards the entrance of the village, of the mountain, and then having all the rock formation on either side or both sides of the village itself, the village entrance, uh, if you follow kind of those lines you know, from the top of the mountain all the way down, it kind of leads right there. So I'm trying to have or to add a bunch of different lines, a bunch of different elements to really try to focus our uh, focus the interest at the entrance of the village, which is also why in the foreground uh, it's pretty dark, right? So we don't see a, a whole lot of details and that's the way it should be. There's nothing in the foreground that is of of great interest here. What we're really, really looking at is the mountain itself, the entrance to the village, and of course the orb to kind of understand the scale of everything. But the characters in the foreground are definitely secondary. Uh, they don't really serve any purpose other than to tell the scale. All right, so we're back in here in Photoshop in real time, and uh, I'm I added a couple of things in here, so the clouds and the um, you know to again to knock down kind of the influence of the big uh, the big orb there to make it less noticeable, and really try to emphasize some more the entrance here, which is um, again the whole purpose of this whole thing. And before I move on to uh, well to the Photoshop uh, tricks that I wanted to show, this painting here was done in the context of art school. So this is going to be for term eight, uh, environment design. So I'm teaching how to create environments, and of course, art school includes many, many more subjects, many more classes. So I highly recommend that you check it out if this is something that you're interested in. It's a complete program aiming at teaching anyone the skills that you need to become successful as a digital artist. So you can learn more by clicking the link in the description below or you can click on the right of the screen here and that is going to be it now moving on to the Photoshop trick that I've been talking about what I wanted to show you is a cool trick that I used for the um, for the bushes here so for all the, the little plants here the darker the darker bushes and that's something that I use sometimes uh, it really has a place you know in in some scenarios so depending on what you're working on but it's really really powerful to add a lot of detail quickly so I'm going to try and show you what I mean here uh, with the foreground so the foreground is pretty empty right now but I am going to add um, some quick plants and then we'll take a look at at snow which is another good use um, for this for this technique here so really what it what this is all about is uh, layer styles so we're going to be working with two different layer styles. So the first one here is uh, the, the bevel one and then drop shadow. And what it looks like if I'm just um, you know, painting something, uh, something simple here, it looks like this, right? So even though I'm painting a flat color, it's getting a little bit of self shadow here, as you can see, and it's also casting shadow onto the environment. So that shadow, well, we can move it depending on the light source. If the light source was coming from the other side, what I could do is double click on this and change the angle so that it's pointing to the to a different direction. Uh, but right now, this seems about right. So I'm going to leave it like that. And of course, you know, with this, this kind of brush doesn't doesn't work that well. But if you have something like, um, let's see, something that's a little bit smaller. So let's say I'm trying to add a bunch of mushrooms, for example, or or maybe like small, small plants and things like that. This uh, becomes really, really interesting. So can start to do things like that, right? So now I'm just using the same color, but if we mix it up and change uh, the color maybe to so something uh, to add a little bit of saturation in here. There we go. So we have some uh, some some flowers maybe. And you can see here, like right now, it's just, uh, it's just a bunch of dots, right? But if you had a brush where you have the little stem and maybe like a flower brush, then you could be creating a ton of flower, ton of details here in the foreground really, really quickly with this. And it looks really good. Uh, I've created a brush here that's uh, for grass and this one works pretty well too. So, you know, things like this, just kind of spray that a little bit everywhere. So it has kind of like a scatter, scatter uh, setting. And 
and you can get some really good looking grass really quickly this way. And it casts shadow on itself. And so, of course, you know, if you draw too much, it's kind of just blending everything together. So we can definitely like pop another layer. Control J. So I'm just going to erase everything that's on here so that we can keep adding and kind of layering the different uh, zones, the different regions of grass here. So here, this one will be kind of in front, maybe a little bit brighter. So there you have it. So really, really quickly, as you can see, we can get some some really cool three-dimensional uh, plants this way with, with shadow and a cast shadow on itself. And it actually looks really, really good and takes no time at all. So layer style are really solid uh, in some cases. So not always, definitely not always, but things like that, things that are closer to the ground work especially well with this. Now I have another one here uh, for snow. So let's say you have a snowy environment. That's another great use of this uh, this tool here. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the snow color. There we go. So I'm adding a little bit of snow. Probably remove the plants here. Get them out of the way. But yeah, just adding some snow. And then we can erase it the same way. As you can see here, the shadow kind of adjusts itself. We got some melted snow here or something. And then if you want to add more snow, I have another layer on top, which is similar, but not quite the same. And this is great for uh, well snow that's kind of packed on top of more snow, right? So it's stuff like this here. So this one doesn't cast a shadow, it's just a self shadow. All right, so how cool is that? Uh, of course, you now the color is a little bit off here. Let me make that slightly darker. There we go. That probably looks a little bit better, a little bit more like snow. But there we have it. So this is, um, you know, the power of layer styles. As you can see here, those are my settings. So it's pretty, pretty simple. I didn't do, I didn't do a whole lot in here. So bevel selected, and those are the settings. So a little bit of depth, uh, increased size, and, and soften. So we get kind of the soft transition from shadow to light. And then you select the angle of the light and the highlights and the shadows. Of course, this works best with snow because it's kind of like this blue tint. But uh, you know, if you're working on something else, you know, you, you'll probably want to change those colors here. And we have the same deal here with the plants. So uh, there's not going to be any kind of highlight for these. I've found that it works best without, uh, but definitely shadow. So shadow is always kind of like this blue tint, right? So blue comes just from the color of the sky. And then I have drop shadow added to this, which is very simple. So normal blend mode, just a black color. And then you can uh, we can tweak the distance. Let's say you're working on something that's in the background here. You'll probably want that distance to be reduced some more so that it doesn't look like the thing is floating. So it'll look like a cloud. We can actually try that. Right, so in this case, since the distance is a little bit far, uh, it almost looks like clouds. So that can actually be another another type of use for this. So tiny clouds are kind of like floating, hovering on top of the grass in the far distance here. But uh, yeah, that is it. So very, very simple. And it allows you to create a ton of really cool stuff incredibly quickly. So there you go. I hope this helps, uh, you know, especially if this is something that you had never really tried before. Um, like I said, it doesn't work all the time. You can easily overuse it so that it doesn't look too good. But in certain scenarios, just like I did with the bushes here, uh, it really, really works well. And it's a big time saver because, you know, you don't have to worry about the shadow. You don't have to paint that in. You don't have to worry about the self shadow. So you save a lot of time when you use it in a smart way. All right, but here we have it. So that is going to be a wrap for this episode. I hope that this was a little bit entertaining, that you learned a thing or two maybe. And uh, make sure to tune in for the next episode. So smash that like button and make sure that you click on the bell to be notified as soon as the next episode is out. I hope you have a good weekend. I'll see you next time.